when you think about Made in Italy, what do you portray in your mind? The famous 4F, food, fashion, furniture and Ferrari. These are the most likely to come to your mind. The greatest uh, luxury brand, the elegance of Italians. But actually, uh, in reality, the thing that Italians do export the most in the world are high-hand engineering products, which is worth 20% of the total of exports of Italy. The furniture and fashion industry together, they don't reach uh, 5% of the total amount. The real strategic advantage of the Made in Italy is even more in patents than in the brand uh, registration of uh, trademarks. The problem though is that this strategic advantage is bound to be faded and probably will be faded very soon. Why? Because China launched a program which is called Made in China 2025 under Prime Minister Li Keqiang a few years ago, which includes a detailed plan to ensure that the People's Republic of China will become a world leader in some key areas over the next years. This industry of the futures, of course, accounts for information technology, mechanics for agriculture, pharma, everything related to diagnostics, semiconductors, green vehicles, aerospace, the maritime industry, and of course, artificial intelligence. All fields in which China traditionally was forced to import products from abroad, and now is going to, of course, serve the domestic market, but also to tackle the export market. So the entire world will become a customer of China in this sense. It is no coincidence that the Chinese Silicon Valley, which is located in Guangdong and Sichuan area, mostly in Chengdu and Shenzhen, is now second only to the original one, uh, the California one. And it has already trespassed, for example, uh, Israel, uh, which was the second uh, most important Silicon Valley in the world. And it is not by chance that it has been announced recently that from the next year, artificial intelligence will be a subject starting from the primary schools in China. So we're not talking about 30 year horizon. Uh, we're talking in a very uh, short term. And with the systemic vision, this of course is achievable. And this systemic vision is possible to be applied only in countries without the validation of the mechanism of typical to democratic systems. So this is a first direction, uh, but there's another one too. Uh, we're not talking about artificial intelligence in this case, but a more marketing one. So the brands. So up to now, we have been, of course, talking about China just as the factory of the world. But now the first important major brands have been facing uh, the entire market of the world. So there's a much more sense of appeal towards uh, Chinese brands like uh, Huawei, for example, which is uh, not by chance the CFO and uh, the daughter of the founder, Meng Guangzhou, was imprisoned actually recently because there's, there's also a kind of war related to that. Uh, but also the case of Suning, which is quite uh, popular now also in, in Europe, in Italy, after and they bought the football team of Inter Milan. So Chinese products will not just be more advanced from a technological point of view, they will be more beautiful and more exportable. This will drastically shrink the space for European products, which would be more expensive at this point without any technological advantage. So it will not be ju justifiable from a, a price point of view and also, and sooner than expected, for marketing. So the day when Europeans will be a follower towards the, uh, the Chinese brands is not that far, and also the moment in which we will find ourselves disassembling Chinese products to reverse them from an engineering point of view, or to falsify uh, brands with uh, ideograms in the close future. If you want to know more about this kind of uh, things related to artificial intelligence and the development of the great factory of the world, please write in the comments here and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Xie xie, zai jian.